Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. I'm making this video here to help you out with numbers 25, 41, and 45 in your OER college physics text. And these are in chapter 8, so we'll start with 25. <coughs> Let's see, point charges of 5 and negative 3 microcoulombs are placed 0.25 meters apart. So start with a picture. We've got a charge that I'm going to call charge 1 and label it. It's given in the problem, 5 microcoulombs. Right, we've got a negatively charged particle, which I'm, I would call charge 2, minus 3 microcoulombs. Distance given in the problem, 0.25 meters. All right, and what does it say here? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Where can a third charge be placed so that the net force is zero? So we want to take some sort of mystery charge here with an unknown value. And the idea is where can we place it in this region so that the net force is zero? Now, one thing to realize is that location has to be somewhere along this line here. Because if I, if I place this charge anywhere else, you know, this guy will repel it, this guy will attract it. There's just no way these force vectors are ever going to add to zero in any other location. If you're not convinced, try drawing this charge at any location here off this axis and draw the force vectors on it. And you'll find there's just no way they're ever going to add to zero. All right, so the location we're looking at has to be along this path somewhere. So then the question is, you know, like, over here or maybe in this region or maybe over here well just try it you know imagine that I place that particle right here and then ask yourself what are the force vector directions between this guy and this guy and between this guy and this guy and then ask yourself all right is there any chance that they'll add to zero and you need to take into account the fact that this guy is closer and has a higher charge magnitude wise right? when you ask yourself that question also imagine putting this charge somewhere in the middle notice that this guy will repel it this guy will attract it so draw the force vectors on it and ask yourself is it possible these force vectors can add to zero then put that object over here somewhere and draw force vectors for this guy and this guy. I'm sorry, uh, between these two and then between these two. And ask yourself, could they possibly add a zero? Keep in mind that this guy is closer but has less charge. Right? Once you've decided on one of these three regions, Right, then you can kind of start proceeding with the problem. I'm going to assume that maybe you believe this thing ends up right here. Then the question is how far away? That's some sort of unknown. You might do something like X. Then, then what you would do is draw force vectors on this. You know, One might be to the right for this guy. One might be to the left for this guy and label them. Maybe uh, F2 uh, and F1 because they're coming, whoops, I think I got those backwards. <laughs> this is charge one, repelling this. So let's call this one F1. And this is the one I call charge two, attracting it. Let's call this one F2. And then F1 can be expressed K Q1 times whatever this guy's mystery charge is over this distance squared. Now in my setup here, that distance would be 0.25 plus X. Force 2 can be written KQ2 times our mystery charge over this distance squared. You should be able to set up an equation fairly easily, an algebraic equation between these two, um, because the net force needs to be zero, and you'll get an equation that you can solve for x. All right, so that should be enough on 25. Whoops. Didn't want to get rid of all of that. Just that. All right, 41. So let's see here. All right, so in 41, there's a picture 
and it's got an A and a B. I believe they're referring to the top picture because it says figure 18.52A, and that picture looks something like this. I'm just going to do a quick sketch. And it's got these, I'll even color code it, these red charges, something like here, here, here. Now, this one is labeled plus Q. This one is labeled minus 2Q. This one is labeled plus Q. And there's a zero here. The X values are all given here. Let's see, one, two. This one's at X equals three, I presume meters probably. Oh, nope, I'm sorry, these are in centimeters. This one is at X equals, what, five, six, seven, eight centimeters. And this one's at X equals 11 centimeters. So all I've done here is just drawn a picture, kind of copied it, interpreted these numbers. And it says, what is the force on the charge located at eight centimeters? So the eight centimeters is this guy. So there's going to be an attractive force between these two. Draw that force vector in and then calculate it. It's equal to K, Q1, Q2 over this distance squared. Okay. Next, there's going to be a attractive force between these two. So draw that force vector on that charge and give it a name. Then calculate it. It's going to equal K times this charge times this charge over this distance squared. Now, this is 8 to here and then 11 to here, so you can that should allow you to calculate that. When you draw the force vectors and you do the calculations, don't you don't put that minus sign in. And the reason, once you draw the force vector directions, for example, the attractive force between these, once you draw that to the left, you have used that sign. This is now a, just a magnitude. Right? And then add these uh, force vectors vectorally. That should be enough to get you rolling on that. Let's get rid of this guy. All right, so let's talk, oops, let's talk 45. All right, so 45 has got a picture, and there's quite a bit there. I'm going to take a moment here and pause this and get that picture up. Okay, I'm back. Just wanted to try to keep the video kind of short. So there's a picture that looks something like this. Um, let's see, charges A and B are both positive. C and D are negative. I know this because of the numerical values that were given in the problem. They also said that QA and QB are equal. So these two have equal charges, and it says in the problem that QC and D are equal. All right, so then we have this unknown charge in the middle. It doesn't say, I don't see a plus or a minus. I'm going to assume it's positively charged. And it says to use symmetry to calculate the net force on this charge. So you start by drawing force vectors. And again, the problem is all about this guy. The question is asking for the net force on this animal. So I'm going to start drawing in force vectors, plus, plus. That's going to give us a repulsive force. That's the force between, well, I'll just say from B. Now, this is calculated by taking K times this charge times this charge over this distance squared. You can get a numerical value out of that, I believe, if the, if the distances are given. Now it says the square is 10 centimeters on a side, so there's a little bit of geometry work. They're saying that this is 10 centimeters and this is 10 centimeters. That means that, I'll do this in green, if I draw a geometric triangle like this, that means this is 5 centimeters, this is also 5 centimeters, that's going to allow you to calculate this, which you need for the distance. Now. Once you get that calculation done, let's move on and talk about this guy. We're going to get a repulsive force between these. That's going to put a force vector this way, force A. But look at the symmetry of the problem. These are the same charges, and this is the same distance. So that should pretty easily tell you what that guy is. Now, also notice the symmetry of the problem here. If these are the same magnitude and you look at it in terms of components, you know, this guy's got like a horizontal component. I'm going to draw this in red. Oops, a little too far. I'll just do that. And a vertical component. 
this guy has a horizontal component and a vertical component. These components would have to be the same as well, and they're in opposite directions, so they would just add to zero. These two components are in the same direction. They're going to add, and this would be a 45 degree angle. So this component right here is going to equal whatever this magnitude is times the sine of 45 degrees. This vector component is going to equal whatever this magnitude is times the sine of 45 degrees. Then you'd add them together. Now we're not quite done here, that's just the first pair of forces. All right, in addition to these, we're going to get an attractive force between these two things. So put a force vector, oops, put a force vector in. And to kind of distinguish it here, I'll give it a color here. Let's make it that fuchsia color or something. And these two are going to attract. All right, so to calculate this magnitude, you're going to take the K, the Coulomb constant, times this charge, times this charge over this distance squared. Now the good news is that distance is the same as it was before. Once you get this force vector, you basically automatically have this one as well because it's the same distance and these charges are equal given in the problem. And then same argument as before, think about this in terms of components. If I look at like this force vector, it's got a component vertically I could draw like this and another component I can draw like so. This guy, same vertical component and then a horizontal component this way. These horizontal components are going to add to zero. Remember, that was the same as the horizontal components on these guys. So all the horizontal components in this problem are going to add to zero due to the symmetry of the problem. You only need to worry about vertical components. And again, you're looking at this kind of fuchsia here, force vector. Once you have the magnitude, this would be a 45 degree angle because of the symmetry of the problem. This horizontal component or I'm sorry, vertical component is going to equal whatever this magnitude is times cosine 45. Same thing with this guy's vertical component, right? Add all those force vectors. You're going to be adding the ones that are all vertical to get the net force on that particle. So that should be enough, hopefully, to get you through 45. Uh, we can work on it and, or talk about it in class as well. Have a great day.